Yes, Mr. Banks. How are you doing, Lance? I am fine, thank you, sir. I am so happy yeah. to be here on this project. That uh, well, welcome, welcome again to Cape the Cayman Islands. Mm -hmm. So you are here in on the Grand Cayman, and this project is a very unique project in the sense that the business model of this project is that though it appears to be an apartment complex, none of the units will be for sale. Um, it is pretty much solving a problem that we have here, whereby people move on island, especially professionals, and it's very difficult to find places to live that are, that are affordable. So the owners of this project came up with an idea whereby they can build a facility, it's about 254 rooms, but call it 108 units. And the, in, the units are categorized are, are divvy up as one bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, and four bedrooms. So which means that there's very very amount of offer, offerings then. So all the units were rented, maybe maybe through companies because companies tend to have challenges with this um, staff of nowhere to live. And to your left here, this building is quite a big building, it's about um, more than 16,000 square foot of space, but it will be all the storage space, all right? And this is before the residence and for anybody that need to store store um, their personal items while they're on the island. So all the buildings are three-story buildings and also in this facility, they will have like cafeteria, gym, gymnasium, or a gym as we call it now. Um, and also they will have offices that will be available for the staff to work from. And then in the middle, there's a central area with a courtyard with, which includes a swimming pool and a terrace. So we're pretty much trying to achieve a we have a June 2024 deadline to build this complex, but we are working to see if we can achieve that in April. So, so you have come to this project with a lot of um, construction experience behind you, huh? Yeah, about 34 years of experience working in, well, this is my fifth Caribbean country. So I've lived and worked in Barbados and Turks, Trinidad, Jamaica, and now the Grand Cayman, basically. So, and one of the unique thing about this project is that there's an opportunity to innovate. So, even though I'm a staff member with the firm, I'm given this sort of um, leverage to do anything that can actually reduce costs and improve the working condition of the men. We have a bit of a sitting area for the guys. They, it's a general sitting area, like a lunch room. Um, and um, just in front of here, we, we have a, a restroom facilities. As you, can, as you can see, it's nicely set apart. Um, we use a system which we call self-cleaning, where the staff, when we actually go to use the facility, if it's not clean, we try to clean it as we go along. So mm. we don't wait for somebody to come and clean it. Mm. So your innovations, how do how how does the staff respond to all these things? Respond to these things? Well, and I mean, some of it is it's easy; they adapt to it easily. But the ones that involve discipline. Like for argument's sake, you'll see reverse park only. Um, that sometimes can be challenging because people wonder why are they supposed to come and reverse park, you know? So, but generally, um, if we are disciplined, over time, people basically actually respond better and they comply. And if they don't comply, what you'll do is just adjust a bit and then press a bit and then the changes come over time you know mm -hmm. and 
just in front of you is called a work plan board. That's where when we have meetings in the field, we basically have go to the board and we, you know, well, this one, the board down the, down the bottom has like a, a white board on it. This one have a pin, a peg board. And we use that even for training for the guys too, generally. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the process improvement, you know. I remember when you were in Jamaica and I went on a work site with you. How, how have things changed in the construction industry when you were in Jamaica as a regards now being in Cayman? Well, I mean, there are a number of similarities. The changes, because of the, the construction industry has been one that has been slow to grow, growth to growth. And even though there have been so, so, um, so many innovations in terms of equipment and tools, mm -hmm. you find that we still suffer in terms of productivity. Okay. And that's been one of the challenges. So it's still the same, same old problems we have in here. But I mean, the, the, one of the good thing is that because of a system that we have on this project where we have what's called a circle meeting. I don't know if I told about a circle meeting, but the circle meeting is where every Monday morning we have at quarter past seven, we all come together on, on the site, we meet in a circle. Some people call it a prior meeting <laughs> because we start off with a prior. Um, because of so many different religions around, we actually have a silent moment. So it's a silent prayer. And then, having done that, we do a count, a head count. Each person is, um, take a number, starting from the person who is running the meeting. And then each of the supervisor stand in a circle and they address the team and they tell what they mended last week, what they're planning to do this coming week, and they give, they applaud their workmen. And what it do, does, it, it motivates the guys to work together. It brings more discipline to the team. It brings control. I don't know if you notice when we're coming in, there's a notice board here. And that notice board has been there maybe more than six months and there has been not one notice posted on it. Because the circle meeting takes care of all that. Everybody's informed and uh, we collaborate. Any problems we have in that same meeting, we treat with it, we solve it and we go to work for the rest of the week. And safety is a big thing. We have a safety moment, but we don't preach safety to the guys. We have an open forum where everybody share something about safety and we encourage each other. So that's one of the most unique part of what we do here because that helps to control the site and gives everybody opportunity and more importantly, respect for people. Tell me something. Uh, you were, before coming to Cayman, you you were the CEO of the Udicott hmm. yes. in Trinidad, right? Yes, Udicott, Urban Development Corporation. How does how does construction here compare to what Udicott will undertake in Trinidad? Well, it is different in the sense that most of the facilities being built here is more to do with um, commercial and residential, like um, condos, hotels, some hospitals. But in Udicott, it's a little more institutional. Udicott we built at the time more fire stations, hospital, all those public facility. Mm. I mean, very few of our projects were revenue generating. The projects here are all revenue generating. So that's the big thing. And Trinidad is as fast for people to use. It's good for social development, but in the end it's, it is unsustainable in many cases. But here you find that every project must be a sustainable project. It must be earning some kind of revenue. But would you, what would you advise? I mean, as regards Trinidad, I'm, I'm from Trinidad, so I am concerned about our country being, you know, uh, sustainable revenue, you call it? Yeah, sustainable, sus, um, uh, well, sustainable project. Uh, or, yes, that will earn or, revenue. Or we call it construction. So, so, there's two sides to it, all right? Uh -huh. There's construction sustaini sustainability which actually comes back to if you notice again when you have these when you have these um uh -huh. these um large projects mm -hmm. these large projects in trinidad there's always hold on, pause, pause. i can't go ahead Drop the
Came over the conference room for me. What are you doing this? Happy birthday. <laughs> so coming back to what we were speaking about um sustainability, right? Mm -hmm. So we have two sides to it, right? You know. mm -hmm. One is sustainability for construction itself. Right. And there's sustainability for the nation. Right? So in Trinidad, a lot of our projects use it tend, tend to be very political. So we build a whole set of um, community centers, all right? Because a community center is typically about 10 million. It gives work to people. So we build these projects and we can say we build X amount of community centers and improve the community. But you know what? Half of them are closed up, all right? Tobago is a little different because the community center building is used for like weddings and like that. But take elsewhere in the Caribbean where community centers are used differently. Community centers can be innovation centers. So we can have small startups. Alright? So you can actually use a community center like for somebody who is doing sewing, somebody who is doing carpentry, different things. And those are like brand development. Alright? Mm -hmm. So on the construction side though, the sustainability of construction come back to the workers because people get work today and then they have no work tomorrow what if you turn the project environment into a learning environment where when people work and the work is done you know what they have even a certificate to carry it forward right and that is maybe one of the big one of the big difference you know in terms of how we can actually improve the industry as a whole and remember if that person also have that certificate and they can show through practice that they are improving then it all goes better for the country yes all right and it comes back to why persons like me are basically outside the trend that working because i have been able to do my own profile in terms of build my profile and then market myself but then that could be marketed even through the government all right and we call them expatriates all right mm -hmm. <laughs> the americans come in on work and they come in oil industry they're all expatriates where are the carbon expatriates where are we were expatriates working to build the carbon non-existent mm -hmm. you know and is that is that more expensive is that costing us anything more no i don't think so either so it's a different way to spend the revenue right yes sir you know, if you look at Japan, Singapore, they have no oil, they have nothing. They have people. The car, the car we're driving is made in Japan. All right? Mm -hmm. So that's some of the ways that we can look at improving. Well, Mr. Bands, I do thank you for your time in seeking to shed some light on construction in Grand Cayman and perhaps ways that we could really improve our our um, situation back home in Trinidad do you see yourself coming back to Trinidad one day perhaps in a construction capacity again well I remember I have a company in Trinidad which is still running and I mean I have the objective is to is to grow that company but grow it to be based in Trinidad but to service the Caribbean on a whole because I, I don't see myself as just a Jamaican or even adopted Trinidadian, as I call it. But I see myself as a CARICOM national. And uh, my objective is really to build people so that they can build successful projects and make construction enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So on that note, yes, I mean, wherever the Lord's, Lord leads me, it takes me. That's right, that's you know? right, yes. So, yes. and you see, I mean, the site is kind of dumb, I know, because the guys are all paid and gone home. Mm -hmm. But a lot of work has gone into it, eh? Yes, yes, yes. What you see here is we have done this um, since January. Yes, I am very impressed with your company's advance in this whole construction business. I remember when you, you know, encouraged me and you and your, your wife, your dear wife, Roxanne, 
encouraged me to do a, a safety course. You know, yes, I, I really enjoy that. You know, it, it has helped me in my own home life. I think a lot of people should really volunteer, you know, to do a safety course. It helps with a lot of, you know, groundwork for children, safety and adult safety, elderly safety, you know. I really, I really enjoyed it. And the surprising thing was that um, I was able to, <laughs> I was able to, not being a member of the construction industry, but I was able to do pretty well. I mean, you did help me. But so, thank you very much, and my friend.